If you're in he, uh, Hebrews 11 and 7, say amen. amen. By faith, By faith. Noah. Being warned of God of things not seen as yet. Moved with fear. How many of us are waiting for God to move? We put it on God because we missed the message. Constantly asking God do something, God do something. Ah, oh, I did my part. Quit you like men. I'm looking for a man to move. I'm looking for a man to step up. I'm looking for a man to just quit acting and start doing. Moved with fear. Prepared an ark. Whenever you hear me say ark today, we're not going to build an ark. We're to build a church. He chose an ark then. He chooses a church now. To the saving of his house. Your house will be saved because of a church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You may not like everything at the church, but you better like what the church is for. That's right. You may not like, I'm pretty sure, well, let me just like, I'm pretty sure Noah didn't like everything about that ark. Well, let me break down to you. There's elephants in there. You just think about that a minute. There's chickens in there. You hear what I'm saying? See, the problem with some of you, 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 you're so secure in making your house clean that you've missed that this world's still messy. It's a messy world. And we've traded clean houses for dirty spirits. We've traded successful lives for spiritual anemia. Noah being warned of God. Have you heard from God recently? Told him that I'm coming. Oh, we haven't seen it yet. Moved with fear. Have you moved with fear? By the word of God, by the presence of God, in the house of God. Are you a godly man? To the saving of your house. Now listen, by, listen here. By which... He condemned the world. You can't be condemning to a world if you're looking just like them. If your measurement is worldly, you've already missed it. I will tell you flat out, you better find yourself at an altar and grab your arrogant carcass and pray it through. Say, I'm not condemning the world. I joined it. I'm not carrying a cross. I look too much like them. In fact, why would... Why would God choose me to represent him when I'm not doing anything Jesus did? He sacrificed. He carried a cross. He bled to reach souls. Does that look like us? He walked away from opulence. To what? To show the contrast to the world. If your life isn't contrasted, we've missed something. And became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. It doesn't make sense to us when Jesus says carry the cross and deny ourselves. Our world says the opposite. Why would you deny yourself? Why would you, why would you push the plate back? I would say there's a whole lot of food, but we got food shortages. But really in America, we, we got it pretty good. But we don't push the plate back like we should. We don't deny ourselves. We feel like if we could afford it, just buy it. We never consider what it does to our witness. Because we think we have righteousness, but he lets us know our righteousness is filthy rags. So at my best successful in the world, I'm standing before God trying to prove I'm righteous with him with filthy rags. Let's go before the Lord Jesus. We need your help. This world is attacked us. It's attacked the church. You've warned us, God. Help us, Lord, today to understand and move with fear, with reverence, with understanding, with enlightenment by the Spirit of God as we are full of the Holy Ghost. Let me today, God.
as I bring forth this word to these yes. great men here today, yes. that each and every one of us, as we represent a household, is this household of people that are saved and on their way to heaven because of our direction, because of our choices, because we choose today who we're going to serve. Yes. And all the men said in Jesus' name, in Jesus name, God bless you, you can be seated. This is not a salvation message, not personal, but family. Anybody here want your whole family saved? Well, let, me, let, me, let me throw a caveat in here. Sister Peaches, we honor you today too because you're filling both roles. I honor that. I honor that. I know that for a great period of time that my wife had to step up in ways uh, for her for her family. I'm talking about men that, as Noah prepared an ark, we prepare the church for the saving of our households. It's it's important to understand that the church has to become something more important than something you come rushing into at the last minute at ten o'clock on a Sunday morning or. 7.30 on a Wednesday night. We all know that Noah faced the dangers of the flood, something that had never happened and never been seen. If you don't understand how Noah spent a lifetime working on something that looked as crazy back then as the church looks today. By faith, Noah. The Bible says that this is the age where everything that can be shaken will be shaken. The Bible says in Daniel 12 and 1, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at the time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. That verse speaks of deliverance. But remember, before deliverance comes the dilemma. We talk about deliverance. We shout about it. We, we, we call it victory. We dance. And our young people, after having an exhaustive week at camp, have, have not only partaken but learned to worship, to almost get beside themselves in the presence of God and us in our astuteness. Uh, well, they're just a little excited. Well, it's better being just a little dead. Are you hearing me? We, we, we need both sides because we need balance. The young people need to get some of our wisdom and we need to get some of their zeal. And, and every man said amen. See, the flood that we're facing today is a test of your morals. The test of your perseverance. Your integrity your stamina, and most importantly, your faith. Can your faith, will your faith withstand the flood of moral decay that we have today? Or have you bought into the so-called security of the world and laid up for yourselves treasure where moth and rust doth corrupt and you're completely devoid of heavenly treasure? Will your Faith withstand immorality, and the frivolity, and the human propensity for selfishness, greed. Will what you have protect your family? With what you are as a man, as a leader, will it lead your family to salvation? Well, is what you represent is not, not what you think, but what you really are that us watching and me watching is what my daughter and my wife see. Leading them.
will it protect your family? Hebrews 12, 25 through 27. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Hey, Dad, are you going to make it? Hey, Father. Hey, head of household. We acknowledge you today. Dad's father's entire representation is important because you're standing between your family and that flood. By faith, Noah stood in a place unenviable, probably looking for maybe trying to find a way out. But when there's no other way, somebody has to stand up and say, I'll move. I'll move. I will move myself into spirituality. I will move myself to find God in prayer. I will search the scriptures. I will push back the plate. Uh, how terrible would it be as men if we rescued ourselves from a flooding house and to stand outside drying and preening and caring for ourselves, thanking God we're saved? And look back to find your family drowning, trapped inside. It's our job. It's the dad's job, the father's job, to rush into that house, save the family. I'm talking metaphorically. Let me tell you something. Every time you blow off prayer, every time you blow off church, every time you blow off seeking the face of God, every time you blow off reading the scriptures, every time you blow off getting close to God, you're saying, I'm not worried. I'm not concerned about the souls and eternity of my family. Every time you get caught up in something that's distracting, every time you make something more important, every time you send a message to those, ah, we're not that worried about it. Worse yet, that in today's home, it's sad to say that in the midst of a deadly flood, some dads are literally turning on the spigots. There's a flood going on. They decide to run in and turn the water on in the bathtub, turn the water on in the shower, turn the water on in the... It, 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 it. In the kitchen. They add more water by selfishness instead of spirituality, by habits, hobbies, and lifestyles. Instead of getting godly, they become more worldly. In all honesty, if, if, and, and it's, it's, I don't, you know, it's up to you, I'm not a policeman, but if you've got a television and you're listening to all that stuff, you've got the spigot on in your house. You get it. And the reason you don't move forward is because you're spending every day bucking out the same water you keep dumping in. I know you don't like that. It gets against our flesh. But you ain't leading no one spiritually when you got that spigot of that TV pouring that junk in your head. Ain't nothing good on there. That's like saying, how many want to eat in that kitchen today? I'll tell you what, I'm going to go throw some of it in the trash and you can go eat out of that. How many wants to do that? Ain't no different than watching that TV. But with that, well, look at, look at, look at, get that bottle out. Let's take him out to the trash, brother. Point, let's feed him that stuff. You have to understand the world has been so good at saying, man, enjoy the flood. It's really just a swimming pool. Get your little floaty out. Get your umbrella. Have your beautiful wife bring you some iced tea. We're not worried. As in the days of Noah. So shall it be. We're not taking the flood of immorality. And sadly, some of us, and I, I include myself, can sit down and we can talk what's wrong with this world. And we can talk what's wrong with our government. We can talk about it, but we do nothing about it in the house of God spiritually. And that will all indict you on that day when you stand before God. And he says, you knew, you pointed it out, you barked about it, you yelled about it. 
You got passionate about it, but you did not get passionate about the remedy. You didn't get serious in the house of God. You didn't get serious with the word. You didn't get full of the Holy Ghost. You didn't care if you spoke in tongues. You didn't think it was necessary, but God sure did. Let me lay this out there. In a sense, some of us tie weights around our families' necks and still expect them to float. Hundred and twenty years. Now I'm going to sing you out, Brother Davenport. Happy Father's Day, Pop. Seventy-three. 73, 55, 77. I wouldn't have spoke up too loud on that one. I'd have bought the 73 if I could. But okay, 77. Call. Yeah, what is I figured we were saying? Brother, Brother Donald, he's young. He looked good too. Look at him. Look at him. What? You didn't know? He found the fountain youth. He just ain't told none of us. <laughs> Why'd I say that? Y'all tired? Brother Joe, how old are you? You tired? Moses, Noah, 120 years of faithfulness. You tired? You retiring? Let me ask you, we sleep a third of our life. You need a day off? It's not important today? Who's going to drown because you took a day off? Who's going to drown because you thought, hold on now, hold on, I got to get serious here. Who's going to drown in our family because we blow it off on being them instead? What, if, what did I do to contribute, contribute to that direction? Noah didn't allow himself to get weary or jaded or disgruntled by all the toil and all the work, the church of his day. You know what? He had eight people showing up. And he stayed faithful to the task. Well, if God ain't going to give me any more, I'm not going to quit. Oh, what? So your family can be lost? Man, I tell you what, if you could save your family, I don't care if that's all you get, get your family. But if you got a bad attitude because you think God... Maybe the reason God can't give you more is because you already got more than you can handle because you got too much of the world in your life. Maybe because you won't take the church serious, you won't take prayer serious. Can you imagine me as a pastor not taking this serious? God, fill my church up and let's build another one. He already promised he won't give you more than you can handle. And if you're so worldly, you can't take on more spirituality. Why would he give you more people to lead? I'm kind of preaching to you young people right now. As Brother Joe was holding that mic in, in my eyes, it turned into a baton because I'm looking for a young man to hand it to. Come on. He'll never take my place, but my God, he better replace me. You, your ego and your arrogance gets in the way if you're worried someone's going to do something you didn't. My God, I hope someone does. My God, I boy, you better out worship me every day. You ain't got the knees I got. You ain't got the elbows I got. You better out worship me. But you won't out wisdom me, but I'm still going to worship. I'm still going to pray. I ain't ready to sit down and die yet. Some of you lay, laid down in your mind while your body's still kicking around. You still got energy to do all your junk, but you ain't got enough energy to do Jesus let me lay it out this way. For 120 years, Noah protected his family with his faith. For 120 years, Noah protected his family with his spiritual hearing. You didn't hear me. He stayed at it because of his hearing. Noah protected his family with his fear and reverence. He didn't have time to do other things. Noah protected his family for 120 years with his participation and preparation of the ark. You've got to ask yourself, how important are you around here?
what are you doing around here? Noah, for 120 years, protected his family by his faith. Listen, man, we, we, we can protect our family in a lot of different ways. But the greatest way you can protect them is by faith. Some of you are so adamant, you're going to make sure they get this and they're going to get that. And, that. and but I understand all that. But what good is it if they gain the whole world and lose their soul? If all you're handing them is worldliness and not a legacy of spirituality, did you really? By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, moved with fear, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Moving in faith saves lives. Acts 16. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and do all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized in he and his. Oh, how? See, it says it that way because, sir, it's your house. You're responsible. You can't pull a pilot and wash your hands. How you go, they go. In fact, let's be honest, we know they go worse. You allow this, they're just going to draw the line back. It's what they do. We all know that. Look at our world. Fathers have slowly relinquished and been shoved in the corner. They're not even needed anymore. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Straightway, and when he had brought them into his house, his house, take ownership, men. Take ownership. Don't come in here and complain about the carpet if you don't come here and pray on it. What? Don't come in here and complain about the arranging of the seats if you're not in here standing in front of them. Everybody can put their hind end on them. And rejoice believing in God with all his house. They had faith. Their faith moved them. God's done moved. The veil's right. The Holy Ghost is available. You move. You move. Faith protects. Faith watches over. Faith delivers. Faith preserves. Noah protected his family with his faith. I get it. We've heard all about our praying mamas and the praying ladies and how spiritual that. I, I notice how it's the ladies always moving up front in the spirit. Ah, oh, y'all, y'all don't. I'm finna get nasty up in here. That's all about the ladies can feel God. And we're back there. Well, is this of God? You wouldn't know even if it was. I dare say it's about time we heard from some praying fathers. Faithful fathers. Men on fire because you prayed all the junk and the spirit and all the ego out of your life. So you get in a spiritual. Wait a minute. Dads, it's time you claim your babies for the kingdom. Dads, it's time you stepped up and got spiritual for your babies. Dads, it's time you protect your children with your prayer. You pray that prayer. You pray that prayer. Dad, it's time you stood up to fight the devils for your baby's deliverance. What? He's doing dumb stuff. But are you doing spiritual stuff? You see, Job teaches us to lead, even if that's the stuff you don't know about. Job 1, 1, and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about. Man, I don't know about you what goes on during a party. <laughs> There's always someone up to something somewhere. That Job sent, all right, I know y'all been partying. He sent for his kids. And he sanctified them. You ain't got no choice. You get your hind end over here because I'm going to do something for you. Too many times we want to give tangible things to our, our children instead of spiritual things. 
And he rose up early in the morning. Sometimes you got to go in there and say, oh, we're getting up because it's prayer time. Erica's in here, and I'll just tell you flat out right now. I tell her all the time. You hear your mom get up in the morning and pray? Or you want to make it, you better start adopting that. You see her Bible laid open like that, and you see all them. I, I, I kept some of them. You go, Sister Sister Crow. She reads through her Bible and then some every year. Ain't no playing about it. She ain't playing pastor's wife. She, my, boy, I tell you, she, 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 she got handed a bill of goods coming here. You know what she did? Bate. Y'all, y'all, I, I get it. I, I understand. I know you mean, but you understand. You got to, I tell you right now, she gets up in the morning for time. You, you can't do better than modeling your life after your mama. I said, well, the day you get up and you start doing that with her, the day you start mimicking that, I'm going to tell you, so you'll be unstoppable. You'll be unstoppable. And it ain't about being better than anybody. But God's not a respecter of persons, but he respects what you do. Well, how are they doing that? They ain't better than me. No, but they're just doing stuff in the dark that you, don't, you, that you wait to try to do in the light. In other words, you wait to do it here in front of everybody. You want to know the people are powerful? They're doing it when ain't nobody looking. They're not doing it for like you are. Oh, look, look at this big check I put in there. Or look at this. I, hey, let me when I worry. I'm going to worship. I'm going to run and shout. You know what, Jacob? What you did the other night needs to keep happening when no one's looking. You bring it up at home. You bring it up at home. You worship at home. Y'all don't even know nothing about that story yet. Some of you might know. But that's what it really is. Pray at home. Worship at home. Turn the music up. Turn the prayer up. Get your Bible out. Read it. Show them. Don't just think telling them is enough. He got them up early. And he showed them how to sacrifice. And he showed them how to put God first. He offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. Job said, it may be that my sons sinned and cursed God in their hearts. What's he saying? They come to church and they put, the, they put the right clothes on. They put the right fun on. But deep down, I'll be honest with you, we spend more time trying to pray to us out of our kids. It's a sad day when they are a chip off the old block because now you've got to be honest. The same things you're doing and struggling with, they're doing it twice as much. Job teaches us something. It ain't always about being worldly successful. It's about, you know why Job got away with it? Because look what he's doing with his kid. Church is important. Being spiritual is important. Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm going to drag you. Don't, you. don't you think I'm going to leave all this to you and, and, and I'll not have a say in your life? You better get it. You, what, what, what? You're not living. Shh. You're not bringing that mess in here. You're not going to talk that way to your sisters and leave your brother. I'm dad, bless God. I'm not just going to have a say because I'm dad. I'm going to have a say because I'm a spiritual leader too. Job did this continually. I could just see them kids. Well, here he comes. Hidden footsteps. Oh, yeah. We had wood floors just, just prior to my dad passing away. We had them wood floors. And my dad was famous for lecturing. If I got my sister, we'd all oh, them lectures. We'd hear him coming. Boy, my dad could lecture. He could lay it out there. And he could, but y'all, y'all think I'm long-winded. But Job called his sons to accountability. He called his daughters to accountability. He rose himself early in the morning on their behalf. Well, you ain't got nothing to get up early for? You got children? You got family? You a part of a church? I say you got to read. And he offered sacrifices on their behalf. What's he doing? He, he's willing to sacrifice everything to make sure his children are safe. He, he demonstrated the value of sacrificing and putting God first. He didn't just coddle them. He led them in a righteousness. He, he, you know what he did? He drew the line really high. I, I doubt he ever said a, a nary word about somebody because he didn't want his kids to get disgruntled. I doubt he ever said anything. I, I, I get if we had a brother Job right here, you wouldn't get him to get in your gossip. 
He wouldn't get. He wouldn't post half the stuff you you're, you're doing on Facebook. He wouldn't be hanging out with half the people we all did that so discord. I think you'd be surprised you'll have nothing to do with all that because he's too busy trying to make sure his family is looking at God right, serving God right, worshiping God right, praying to God right. I guarantee he had some, he wasn't doing no half-hearted. He was getting him up early. Oh, no, this is the way we're going to go. This is what we're going to do. He knew his family souls were dependent upon it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand praise right now. I wonder as I read a famous scripture from Job, he says, but he knoweth the way that I take. That unnerves me sometimes. I know he knows my thoughts. I'm having to drive down the road and pray it through. Yeah, I thought that. God forgive me. I know none of y'all got that issue. But he says, and when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Why can he say that? Because he knows he's living a sacrificial life. You see, let me tell you something. God called us to sacrifice, not success. And some of us has traded our walk with God to be closer to the world. And that's a litmus test that you ain't going to find out you won until you get before God. So you better make sure you got some, you better feel the pain of some sacrifice. So trust me, you may be feeling some pain later. He said, my foot hath held his steps. See, the problem is us. Oh, man, I'm going this way. God, come on. His way have I kept and not declined. What's he saying? Oh, no. Oh, no. I am listening and I can hear it. I'm not doing nothing. I'm not buying. I'm not spending. I'm not getting. I'm not going. I'm not doing. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. Why? I have esteemed. Come on, somebody. What did he esteem? What did he esteem? Nobody here knows. Come on, somebody. Finish that verse for me. I have esteemed his words more than my necessary food. What was he saying? Job was revealing his character. He was a sacrificing man. He was a spiritual man. He was showing us who he was and what it took to be spiritual. Dad, fathers, will your faith protect your family? Men, will your faith deliver your family? Noah's did. By faith, Noah. Everything Noah did in reference to the coming flood was done in virtue of simple faith and belief of what God said. He didn't question it. Let me tell you something. Anybody here ever question God? That's how arrogant he's been. I I've done it. Let me tell you something. Job didn't, I mean, Noah didn't move because he had weather reports. He couldn't look up what Katrina did to New Orleans. He couldn't look up about floods or nothing. He, he, he was merely moving because he was told a flood was coming by God. It had never happened before. Therefore, there was no rendering of, well, there's a probability that he had no reference point. He moved with tenacious faith based on the word of God. Boy, I tell you, if you can get anything, get that. Get that. I'm going to live for God by his word. I'm not going to question. I'm not going to let my family go. Woe was me, put a hot coal to my mouth if I quit. He knows what he's doing. If, if, if Noah could move like that, oh my God, help me today by faith to lead my family. If by faith Noah did, by faith I must lead. Listen. If things in our country weren't so obvious, <laughs> would you still be as urgently teaching your children? Noah didn't get what we got. Would you be leading by example in passionate preparation merely because of God's word? You got to ask yourself that right now. Because in regard to the circumstances which show the strength of his faith, it can be deduced that 
God's talking about a future event that I have no reference point to. Wow. And by faith, Noah did. There was no outward evidence that what Noah believed would occur. But by faith, Noah did. The direction of things seemed against the truth of what Noah believed. There's all these other things going on, and you want me to build an ark. It don't make sense. But by faith, Noah did. It's improbable that when Noah proclaimed the approaching destruction of the world by flood, the possibility of such an event was, was strongly denied by the philosopher of that age, and Noah looked like a nut next to the leading man. But by faith, Noah did. Let me put it to you in my, I got this, I, I thought about this on the way to church, driving right there down front of the road. Or the, some of you are looking too cool instead of crazy. Some of you looking way too cool like this world and the world loves you and they like all this about you because you're not crazy enough and believe in God. Some of you way too cool and not crazy enough in the things of God. You see, his children had to believe in their father's personal integrity. They had to believe in his stance and his tenaciousness to a great degree to follow some crazy old man building some great big ark on a hillside while everybody else is moving and grooving and shaking and baking. But they had to buy into dad and go, by faith, dad, we're sticking with you. We're st by your life, I'm following you. While you're talking, I want to follow you. What you're doing, I believe you heard from God. Oh, we got to stop and think about that just for a minute. You see, Noah wasn't worried about looking cool. Because he's too crazy about the things of God. Even today, the fact that an event could occur that has been denied by infidel philosophers our whole lifetimes. It is improbable. Some such arguments may have been used even in Noah's day. Oh my God, Jesus is coming. What? That again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The time was distant. You see what completes four generations that have passed after Noah prophesied what would occur. The youth had grown to manhood, and there's a crazy old man and his kids up there building that ark. Y'all see any rain? I don't see any rain. Come on, guys, let's go. And every drink they took, and every day that they ignored the call to prepare themselves, by the sound of Noah's family, Sawing, nailing, building. You see, it was their faith of sawing, nailing, and building that condemned those that, y'all look crazy. We're going to go be cool. Noah protected his family by his faith. Because by faith, Noah did. That's spiritual healing. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not yet seen, Noah moved. I said Noah moved. You have to understand the Bible is not a spiritual snack to be eaten every now and then. It is supposed to be your daily bread. And if the only time you're eating it is Sundays and Wednesdays, well, you can probably deduce where your appetites lie. Are you hearing me? Dad, can your spiritual hearing protect your family? Noah's did. Noah protected his family with his reverence and fear. You know, fear of fire is a good thing. In fact, you can see fear of fire right there on that ceiling, right by that fan, right above Sister Peaches. Anybody know what that is? It's a smoke detector. Anybody got a smoke detector in your house? Anybody diligent with them candles in your house? 
Y'all gave me a candle recently. It sits right there next to my prayer chair. And yes, it was lit even this morning at 4 o'clock as I got up to prepare for today. I'm very careful with it. Anybody careful with gas and rags at your house? Anybody careful by the, uh, putting stuff by the furnace and careful attention around the stove? Why? You understand you realize that there's a possibility of a fire. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear and prepared. If you can move with fear and install smoke detectors and be careful how you move around with fire in your house, shouldn't there be something about us that we, by faith, move with that same fear, living for God? Does your life resemble more of those? Caught up in the things of the day or caught up in the things of God? Are you known for spiritual habits or childish hobbies? Are your children seeing a man motivated by faith in God or keeping up with the Joneses? Noah's faithful preparation saved his family. Today it's considered old-fashioned. It's outdated. Young people, you're going to be told that, ah, that's, that, that doesn't mean anything anymore. It's a hold on. Hold over of a bygone era meant more for your grandma and grandpa. You see, we used to shut down the cities and the towns on a Sunday. They used to close everything down because everybody went to church on Sunday. But, ah, that's not important anymore. It's lost its importance, firstly, to the fathers. They're too busy with more pressing and important endeavors. The yard must be cut. A boat or a car must be washed or business must be done. Oh, football is on or some other event. Church is not important anymore. That, yeah. And if you notice, as church has no longer been important, so no longer is the family. Because the creator of the family still was the creator of the church, and now both are almost gone. As the years passed, Noah's faith stayed fervent. Hey, sir. Hey, man. Hey, father. Is your faith fervent? Or have you allowed it to dwindle? You see, today the art or the church should be our primary focus because by faith, Noah's faith. Faith in building the ark saved his family. Hey, Dad, are you focused? Where's your attention? Is it, is it so you can get home to rush home to prop your feet up to sit down and zone out on some program pumping into your household and your head? You ain't got time for prayer. You ain't got time to read your Bible. You ain't got time to be spiritual. Barely making the church on time. Why? You're no longer moving with fear. You have been doped by the opiates of the things of this world. The question really today is, hey, Dad, like Noah, are you reaching your family? I played a song this morning. Actually, I didn't realize I was going to use the lyrics to it, and I played it actually for the last couple of weeks. The song, I believe, was written by Larry and Norma, but many people have done it. My favorite version is the DC Talk version. I do apologize if that offends your delicate hearing, but nevertheless, I digress. I wish we'd all been ready. Life was filled with guns and war, and everyone got trampled on the floor. I wish we'd all been ready. Children died. The days grew cold. A piece of bread could buy a bag of gold. I wish we'd all been ready. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come, and you've been left behind. A man and wife asleep in bed. She hears a noise and turns her head. He's gone. I wish we'd all been ready. Two men walking up a hill. One disappears and one's left standing still. I wish we'd all been ready. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come and you've been left behind. How could you have been so blind? The father spoke. The demons dined. The sun has come and you've been left behind. Dad, husband, father, will your fear and reverence protect your family? Noah's did. Noah protected his family. 
with his preparation and his involvement in the ark. Preparing an ark to the saving of his house, the Bible says. You see, he stuck to the plan, or better yet, he followed God's plan. Let me help you. Your way ain't better than God's because you can't see what he can see. Mm -hmm. The plan included provisions for every member, and he followed out the plan. He saw the plan through to completion. You see, don't quit when you're tired. Quit when you're finished. He never diverted his focus. We don't read of him ever getting caught up in worldly amusements and pastimes. We don't read of hobbies or habits. We know that by faith, what Noah did. Are you hearing me? All the plans should include an understanding of the role. Hey, father. Hey, dad. Husband. What's the goal? Save your family. Save your family. The goal is not financial. The goal is not educational. It's not social. It is spiritual. Understand the devil, his world, is the enemy that actively seeks whom he may devour. Because the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, to destroy. The Lord said, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. You see, a good father, a good, fa a good father is not focused on himself. He's not focused on his immune amusements and his pastimes. He's focused on his God and his family because by faith, that's what Noah did. Hey, Dad, again I ask, can your, will your preparations protect your family? Noah's did. That's how deliverance comes. Somebody steps up. Hebrews 11 says it's by faith. Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. Moved with fear. Prepared an ark. By the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. It wasn't Noah's plan that worked. It was Noah's faith that worked. It saved his family. I want to do something different as we stand. And I meant to send this brother Ezekiel, but I didn't. I'm going to read Hebrews 11 and 7. But I want you to put your name there. I'll put mine for the sake of being easy to read, and it sounds funny to say your name. By faith, Brother Crow, being warned of God of things not yet seen. Brother Crow moved with fear. Brother Crow prepared an ark by which Brother Crow condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. I, I, I urge you, each of you, men, fathers, to take Hebrews 11 and 7 in each morning for the remainder of this month and read that and put yourself in there. Check yourself. Can we, can we be honest? I'm dad. And I need to be saved. I'm dad, and I want to be a better example. I'm dad, I want to be a better prayer warrior. I'm dad, I want to stand in that gap for my family. I... Or wait, 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 let's be, let's be honest. Or I'm a single mom doing both roles. And I am feeling a little stretched by these responsibilities. But today I pray for your strength. I pray for you today that God would allow you to lead your family, that by your faith, like Noah, you can reach your family. Dad, will what you're preparing protect your family? Noah's did. Several years ago, there was a traveler going into the South American jungles to hunt. Sometime during that hunt, he heard an intense ruckus up in the trees. Cries 
some birds, the flapping of wings, the rustling of leaves. The hunter looked and saw a couple of birds fluttering over their nest. Male bird sounding the alarm. Suddenly, the hunter could see the focus of the ruckus, the problem. The snake had spied the nest and was making its way to make an easy meal of the little chits. The snake was slowly moving towards the nest, determined. The hunter grabbed his gun and was about to shoot the snake, but instead decided to watch to see what would happen. What he saw shocked him. The mother bird and the father bird had been dive bombing and doing anything they could to get the snake away from the nest. Suddenly, the male bird flew away. After a minute or two, it returned with a twig in its mouth, some leaves on that twig, and it laid this twig right over the nest. The male bird perched itself there, calmer and quieter than before, defiantly on that twig that he'd laid across his nest, his family's home, and it stared at the snake. The snake got closer and closer to the nest and it appeared to coil itself ready to strike. And then suddenly that once determined snake drew its head back, but then quickly retreated from the nest. After the snake was gone, the birds had quieted down. The hunter climbed the tree and retrieved the twig. It just looked like a regular twig with some leaves on it. So he went to one of the local native villages there, told them the story of the what he had seen and that he had taken this twig from off the nest and wanted to know what it was for. <laughs> the villagers looked at him and said, you know, snakes are able to, to do many things, but this twig comes from a plant, a bush that is deadly poisonous that if the snake was to get near it or crawl near it, the, the sap from it would kill the snake. The very sight or odor of the bush causes snakes to stay clear and flee, free, flee from them. Why'd I tell you that? Like those little birds protecting that, that male bird knew that to lay that twig across his nest was to defend and protect his family. And if you and I, like that bird, would reach for that cross, restore its place back into our homes, allow God's presence and power to again be enthroned in our homes and restore that personal relationship with God to our families. You see, Satan, that old snake, cannot strike the death blow when the nest is covered by a protected father knowing exactly what needs to be done. For all our dads to just make their way forward today. Listen. Even Paul says, sinners are about who I am to Failures and shortcomings are never an excuse to say, why try? 
being honest of your own struggle, of your own battle, of your own fight. Consider not only, not inferior, but weaker vessel of your wife. And knowing that your footsteps are directing the path of your children. I hope that there's an indictment, an encouragement, an awakening for you to realize, wait a minute. By faith, I'm going to protect my home. By faith, I'm going to be a man of God. By faith, I'm going to restore. I want to restore the preeminence of God in this home. And I'm going to lay a cross as the primary focus in our home again. I want to throw out those things that are distracting me and attracting my children and put back the cross. Who you're going to be is entirely in your hands. What you do in your private life, when you're by yourself, with your own thoughts, with your own way, that's who you are. That's who you really are. Who you show your family. To do as I say, not as I do, could never be more arrogant than from hell. They're going to do exactly what you do and less. Oh God. We got some good men here. Yeah. But let's not be good men. Let's be faithful men. Yes, amen. Let's be men of God.